Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Math 301. And today we're talking about optimization problems on graphs, which is an area that has a lot of applications to the real world. This is in sections 10.1 and 10.2. So we'll start with a problem that's been on my mind recently. Let's say I wanted to travel from Denver to Boston, and I want to spend the least number of hours in the car possible. So one way of doing this is to go from Denver to Chicago, that's 15 hours, and then Chicago through Buffalo to Boston, it's another 15 hours, 30 hours. I could also go south to Indianapolis and then um, through New York and up to Boston, that's also 30 hours. Or I could go to Indianapolis and then up through Buffalo, that's only 29 hours. So I just solved my optimization problem, which is to go to Kansas City, then Indianapolis, then Buffalo, and then Boston. So in general, what we've changed here is that we have a graph and uh, now each edge has a weighting, which in this case represents the number of hours in the car, but could also represent something like the number of tolls or um, the quality of the public radio stations. And so we want to now solve a problem for, in this case, this was to find a, a path from Denver to Boston that minimizes or maximizes the sum of those edge weightings. So here's another kind of problem. It's called the, um, minimal spanning tree problem. And the idea is that we now have a package that we need to deliver. To every city on the map. And so we need to set up delivery routes to connect all these cities on the map. And we want the cost of the edges of that um, of that spanning tree to be minimal. All right, and so in other words, we want, we want a, a tree, which is a subgraph of the graph. So we need a connected graph with no cycles and we need it to contain all the vertices. That's what a spanning tree is, a tree that contains all the vertices. Okay, and so this, this kind of problem comes up if you want to connect uh, cities with mail routes or something, or connect uh, cities with airplane flights. And we have a very useful algorithm here called uh, Kruskal's algorithm. And this is what's called a greedy algorithm in that you do what is best first. And then you continue to always take the best possible step. And then you use that to piece together a minimal spanning tree. So in other words, let's say um, we were doing Kruskal's algorithm to connect all the cities on this graph. We would first say, oh, look at this short little edge between Toronto and Buffalo. That would be so nice to have that as part of our delivery route. So you'd include that one. And then you'd recognize that many cities are still not connected and say, oh, well, this is also a cheap route between uh, Des Moines and Kansas City. Here's another cheap route um, between Chicago and Indianapolis. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have all these cheap routes as part of our delivery system? So at each step, you start including the cheapest route. And gradually, as you do this, the graph is going to become more and more connected. So now we've connected these four cities with a path of length three. And now, now we start to have a choice because now we start getting to the more expensive edges. And so we can think about what should we add next? Should we add this one? Well, definitely not because we already have a way to get from Indianapolis to Kansas City. So we don't want to include this edge. So this edge is excluded. So instead we'll take this next cheapest edge, um, which comes from here to here. And you can also um, then add this next cheapest edge. Uh, then we start looking at the edges of length eight 
This one we don't want to add because it would make a loop. This one we don't want to add, it would make a loop, but we still haven't connected Denver up, and so we would add this one here. And then notice that this pink graph now creates a tree and it spans the graph because it connects to every vertex. And so this is a spanning tree. The really cool thing, well, let me say a little bit more about Kruskal's algorithm. So at each step, if you are still missing a vertex, if you still have more than one connected piece to your tree, to your, you, you start with a set of vertices. And if they're not yet connected to each other, you add the cheapest edge. But you have to be careful, you add the cheapest edge that doesn't make a cycle. And you continue doing that until you've reached all the vertices. And the amazing thing about this algorithm is that you can prove that doing this always gives you the minimal spanning tree. If you want to read the proof of that, that's in the book. So let's look now at a more difficult, oh, I actually want to keep this here. Let's now look at a more difficult algorithm. Let's, it's called the traveling salesperson problem. And the idea here is that you have a, a salesperson that needs to go to every city or vertex on the graph, but they also need to return home at the end. This doesn't sound so much more difficult than the last problem. We still need to make it to every vertex, uh, but it turns out that this is a much more difficult problem. And if we just try to do the greedy algorithm here, we might not get the most efficient path. So if you do what's best first, you might get stuck at the end doing something really time consuming or expensive at the end. So we have another algorithm to do this. And this algorithm is not guaranteed to give you the cheapest route, but we have an algorithm whose cost is at most twice the cheapest route. Maybe I should have maybe really made it clear here that we need to return home. All right, so here's, here's how this algorithm is going to work. We have to pick a starting point. Let's pick Denver because that's our starting point. And you use Kruskal's algorithm to make a minimal spanning tree. And by the proof of that, that is the cheapest way to connect all those cities. And to start out, you just trace around the tree all the way around the tree like that. Okay, so why does that have a potential to be reasonable? Well, the minimal spanning tree already excludes the really expensive edges, like this edge 10 from Denver here, or this edge that cost 11 from Indianapolis to New York. So this minimal spanning tree is already avoiding the worst edges. And if we do that, then the cost of this is two times the cost of the minimal spanning tree. So that's a pretty good starting point. But now you want to think, how is this traveling salesperson thinking as they go around the route? You just hear they're just starting out, starting at Denver, going to Kansas City, you know, hitting all these, these important cities along the way to drop off the packages. And they keep on going. And at this point, the traveling salesperson is tired, but they know they have to get to Toronto. And really the only way to do that is to go up here and then go to Toronto. But now when they get to Toronto, they start thinking, do I really need to go back to Buffalo? I've already been to Buffalo. Maybe I could skip Buffalo and I don't have to worry about going back down to Indianapolis because I've already been there also. So maybe I could just skip those and just head straight to Chicago. 
I've already been to Chicago, but like that's definitely cheaper by taking the shortcut than going back all around here. And so the traveling salesperson will, will oh dear, um, will um, forget about going back to Buffalo, go to Chicago instead, um, and then continue. And then when they get here, uh, they'll think, okay, do I really need to go back to Kansas City? Well, no, I've already been to Kansas City and it is faster to just return directly to Denver. And so this last algorithm here is a way of making a route which is somewhat cheaper than two times the minimal spanning tree. And the idea here, again, to repeat, is that you make the minimal spanning tree you start out with the expectation that you're going to cover each of those edges twice, but then at a certain point, if it's cheaper to, um, to, if you've already been to a city and it's cheaper just to move on to the next one, then you stop retracing your steps and just move on to the next one. Two things about that algorithm is it depends on the triangle inequality. Our expectation in life is that if you have a triangle, like this triangle here, that it should always be more time consuming to do two sides of that triangle than the last. And you can see that with this triangle here, that this is 11 hours compared with 10, this is 18 compared with three, and this is 13 compared with eight. And so in order for this algorithm to work, you need the triangle inequality to be satisfied for your graph. The other thing to note about this algorithm is that it depends on your starting point. Because we started at Denver, most of these initial edges uh, were the same, but maybe we should just do this algorithm uh, starting at a, a different point to see what will happen. So let's pick another color, maybe purple. So let's say we instead um, started at I don't know, Boston, maybe. Okay, so then, um, then we would go to Buffalo, we'd go to Toronto, and then already we would be thinking about um, not returning to Buffalo. Uh, we haven't been to Indianapolis. I don't know if there's a direct route to in, from Toronto to Indianapolis, but if so, we would take it. And then you'd go up here and then here and then here we haven't yet been to Kansas City, so we would go down there. We'd end up doing this. And then, and then we would sort of break off this, this part here and then this part and we go back. So the way that this traveling salesperson algorithm is gonna look at the end is going to really depend on your starting city because it's going to closely match the minimal spanning tree at the beginning of the route, and then at the end of the route, start taking shortcuts. Okay, that's it for sections 10.1 and 10.2. See you next time.